Hello everyone, and welcome back to another beautiful day on the Nerdcraft SMP. I am Maxi Man, your favorite cyborg pirate, and I am here today with another video for you guys on the server. You might be asking yourself, what is this shulker box behind? Well, let me show you. So in here, we have a bunch of name tags and some tropical fish. So we're going to add all that to the inventory right now because I'm gonna take you guys on a little tour. So here we have Jeff Lay Snowman. He's got his name tag already, but he's the only one that has one. Now, as you might remember, my little chicken down here does have a name also. He is Little Clucker. So now, Little Clucker officially has his own name tag too. We are going to have a nice place for them eventually. Maybe when I move into the big base, I can make this whole area their own. But for now, keeping them in their little pen where they're safe is what we're going to be doing. So as I said in the last episode, this server, is now upgraded to 1.17 and if you don't believe me the first stop in our little tour today is going to prove to you that we have definitely upgraded to 1.17 so let's go so i don't know if you noticed but i did have a little turtle breeding area in here that's something new that i've built as well as here a uh, nether wart farm this is just so that i can make as much red nether brick as i would like also i have started composting my melons and pumpkins because that giant melon and pumpkin farm that i made up there is way 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 too productive and at first i was trying to trade them all with villagers and turn them into emeralds but i have nearly a full shulker box of emeralds far too many emeralds for any single person to need uh, that's a shulker box of emerald blocks almost so i've just started composting them and uh, this machine it doesn't work like i thought i thought i would put it the melons and pumpkins in the top and it would like distribute through these chests and the chests on the other side and uh evenly be using all four but it doesn't work like that it just sends one down at a time and then that goes into one hopper so it only uses half the hoppers so i just load up these chests instead and then uh it does produce quite a bit of bone meal and then finally the actual stop that we're heading to is here you see i have some glow berries and in here we have four happy little axolotls my new friends so all of these guys i was planning on naming after some star trek characters so let's find those name tags we have bones mccoy we'll make him the cyan one and then we have spock he can be pink and Kirk, he can be the other pink one. And then finally, we have Scotty. Scotty, you're gonna be the yellow one. There we go. So, our axolotl friends are all named. These glow vines are very helpful for getting in and out of here. I just put them in to light this place, and I didn't realize that you could also use them to climb up, so I can climb up in and climb up out using the glow vines. But yeah, I found these guys when I was first trying to explore for stuff for 1.17 and find some of the new blocks. And I just happened to have some iron on me while I was out there, so I made some buckets and started capturing all the ones that I found along the Way. I obviously didn't find one of the super rare ones, and I don't think I found the other one. It's called the wild one, which is like a brownish color. I couldn't find any of those. But these are the ones that I found, and I decided to build them a nice little place to live. So there they are. Now, our next stop that we're going to go to is going to be just outside my base, and it's going to also require some name tags. Okay, so... If you just come out from my base, you can see up there, there's a little bit of new construction. And when we run the corner, we find our stable. So this is my original horse that I found. And then this is another one I found along the way. They both have insane speed. So pretty happy to have those guys. And then along the way, I found this one here, the old donkey. And of course, when you find a donkey and a horse, you gotta make yourselves a mule. So these ones I was planning on naming them Star Wars names. So first we have Ben, and then we have Han, Han Solo, and we have Luke, and since this one is the mom of Ben, we're gonna name that one Leia. So there we go, we have our Star Wars themed horses now, in their little stable. I think they're quite happy here. All right, so for our next stop, we are going to have to go up to the top of my base. Now, I could fly up there, but I do want to show off something else that's newly built in my base. Some Something that I've been meaning to get around to since I first built this place. My brand new elevator. 
elevator. It says Maximin's up down water elevator. Hit the button to toggle up or down. Then ride the waves in style. Thank you for using Maximin's elevator. As you can see right now, it's in down mode with the magma block, but hit that button and it switches to soul sand and fires you up. And this button here is connected with a redstone line going down underground to the bottom, so you can switch it from either side. So you can see this little enclosure up here. That was a very, very long journey that it took me to go here. And uh, essentially what is in there is just another little bit of proof that we are actually in 1.17. Just have to find the way to get up there. I think it's this way. Here we go. As you can see in here, we have a couple of goats. And I think I'm pretty sure they're both screaming goats. Or maybe there's one that just screams all the time. But yeah, they're, they're goats. There's a scream. There's a scream. But yeah, you know, they're just goats doing goat things. Headbutting you for no reason. So I've got some names for them too. We're gonna name them Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted. They uh, don't have much use right now. They just uh, ram you and exist. They're just goats doing goat things. So anyways, we're gonna leave them to their goat business. Then if we step over this way through our door, you'll see I've got some construction happening over here. And this is the original three dogs that I got. So for them, I am naming them after either former or current dogs of myself. So Jake, he's a dog that I had when I was more of a teenager. Uh, Fate, she is the dog that we currently have. And Bard, he's a dog that I had like as a young adult. So there we go. Now we have our dogs named in our little dog kennel. They love it here. He likes his little bed outside, so that's why he's not not hanging out with the other ones, but he is sheltered. I made sure of that, but that is under the shelter. And then over here, I don't know what I'm going to do with these guys yet. I just found them and uh, the trader met with an unfortunate accident. So on account of that, I've adopted his llamas. Um, I've decided to call them Hawk and Loogie. But yeah, so here we have Hawk and Loogie, my new llamas. We'll figure out something to do with those guys too. So, as you can see, all of my name tags are now used up. That is my tour of all of the things that I've been working on recently. But, as I promised in the last episode, there is also something that you guys might want to see. Something that I promised an explanation for. So, let's head there now. So the place that this is, is actually the idea of Demon Queen 64. She suggested that why don't we build like a mini game mountain? So that's what we did and that's what we're starting work on right here. Well, this would be the first of the mini games. Now it might look a little bit familiar to you because this is inspired by something that Cub Fan made. It is a 1v1 dunk tank game. So uh, due to a misspelling, it is called the Tunk Tank tank 3000. So essentially, players can come in here, they place their wager in this barrel. It only accepts diamonds, but as long as both players place in the same amount of diamonds, it'll go into the system down below, and then they come over to their chosen color, be it red or purple, and they come and pick up some snowballs, and apparently maybe some obsidian and iron. Uh, that would be Demon Queen 64, I imagine. And uh, so they grab their snowballs, and after putting the diamonds in here, it will start the redstone underneath. And what happens is you come up here, you get in your little cubby hole and you flip up this trap door so that you're aligned over this trap door. And then the target block up ahead will start to move back and forth. So it's actually a moving target that you have to hit. And you count it down and you start going and the first person to land a hit will, uh, it's possible that both of you can be dunked, but only one person can actually win. So the first person to get a hit will actually have the diamonds delivered to their back area, right? So after you get dunked, you would come out of here and then you come out and then this is the red corner's winnings. So if the red person got the first hit, the diamonds would appear over here. And if the purple side got the first hit, then the diamonds would appear in here. And there they are. That's from the last uh, round that uh, was played. But essentially, yeah, that's it. It's just uh, dunked tank game and you can bet against each other to see who wins. So I am here now with Demon Queen 64 and Miss Kitten Queen and we are going to test this bad boy out. So let's have a little look and we'll see how this mini game works. So first we're going to need a diamond wager. So I've got 10 diamonds here to add to the machine but 
I haven't told them this yet. We're also going to have a little side wager. So whoever wins gets a netherite ingot and some diamond horse armor. Okay, so Miss Kitten Queen, you can climb the ladder over here and then get into the little spruce cubby hole. And then there's a little spruce trap door that you flip up when you're inside. Okay, so get inside and then flip up the trap door. Okay, and then I'm going to go put the 10 diamond bet in. So whoever wins, the diamonds are going to appear in their chest behind. So whoever gets the first hit is going to be who the winner is. All right, so as you can tell from the sounds, the target blocks are moving. So I'm gonna count you guys down. Ready? So five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, we've got lots of snowballs. Oh, and Miss Kitten Queen is down. That means the winner is Demon Queen 64. Good job, Demon Queen. I was in complete silence that entire round. So now we're just going to go down and check out the redstone that makes all of this work. It's a little tight. So this is the dropper elevator that brings the diamonds up to the winner on this side. And then if you go, there's actually two separate levels of this. So the layer down here, what this does is it holds the diamonds in a loop of hoppers that are being blocked by a redstone block. So the diamonds can never leave it until someone wins. And then when someone wins, their redstone block is removed and the diamonds go to whoever was the winner. And oh, this case, me. That's right. And there's a little bit of a circuit over there. That is a delay, which then later resets this so that you can play the game again. So that's it for this layer. And, uh, and also actually that reset resets some of the circuits up above as well so that the whole game is ready to play. And then up here, we have our item sorter that makes sure that only diamonds can go. And then they go in here where they're held up by this redstone block temporarily. And then when there's no more diamonds running through the system, which means that this comparator is off and this comparator is on because it's detecting the diamonds that are there. So when there's no more diamonds running through the system and there is, it detects that there's diamonds being held, then it moves this comparator over and starts this clock, which is what controls the movement of the target block. And then after somebody hits it, that's when it sends a signal downward down below to decide who wins. This redstone, this redstone is all entirely designed by me. So if it looks haphazard and messy, and if there's pro redstoners out there that are laughing at me, I don't blame them. It's all just improvised with the very limited redstone knowledge that I have. But this is what controls it all. Okay, so I am back up here with my towers that I've been working on and I've got some more resources in the shulker box in the background. What I am going to do in this episode as far as progress on the base goes is I'm going to work on the interiors of these towers and make some floors and some stairs and such kind of like what's going on in the other tower there. And I'm also going to make a pathway through the wall that reaches in front of the base and then that's going to go inside one of the towers so that it all gets linked together into one giant thing. So we can step into a time lapse and start working on that right now.
Okay, so that is all the floors of the three towers that I've got here. So now that the floors are done, I kind of want to make some nicer staircases instead of just the random staircases that I've got all throughout. I want to make it like the other side where I have actual nice wide staircases connecting all the different areas. Okay, so I'm not going to do that as a time lapse since I'd have to be inside each floor as I'm doing it. So I will just show you guys after that's completed. All right, well, I have finished all of the staircases connecting all the levels in the three towers on the side. So let's go have a little tour right now and check it out. So the first tower here, this is the shortest tower, and they are all connected together. So this one would be the tallest tower, and then the middle-sized tower is right here. And of course, we have the staircases leading up through all the various levels. That's the same level as the beacon. And this one is kind of funky because in order to uh, keep it looking good, I didn't want to have another roof right here and have like a really cramped area so this one specifically has like just a little ledge you can walk around and then a staircase leading up to the roof like the first tower i tried to keep all the levels roughly on the same heights so it makes it easy to pass from one tower to another as you can see this is the top of that tower which goes directly into this level here that way they all connect really well so that is it that is all my staircases for all my towers that that is another mission accomplished. Well, it is that time again. Time to say goodbye. I have completed all of my missions and shown you guys all the stuff that I've been up to. I hope you enjoyed it all. I hope you enjoyed the video altogether. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like. I would really appreciate that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. It would really help my channel out a lot. Thanks again for watching everything and I will see you in the next episode.